the other one was two channels, this is eight channels, that's the same thing. Uh, all eight in, there's my computer control, I have a couple of different outputs, I have a little ADAT optical output, and uh, I have a couple of multi-pin digital outputs which I'll use. So, I bring the eight channel in with me because it's just easier, it just does more, so. But the same thing, it, it you know, you, you plug in AES-42, you come out AES-EBU, or out of here AES-EBU, into your Pro Tools rig or into your digital whatever, and then I can plug my laptop in and I control it from my laptop, so. It'll make sense once you see it. It's hard to it's hard to think about signal flow with these things because they're a little different. So once you see it, if you can pick, if you can think of that as a as a digital preamp, it kind of makes it easier to understand a little bit. And this is a portable version of, of a digital interface now. We we just started making these. I think we introduced them at the AES show last year. DMI two portable. So these are made to be used in the field with that sound device's portable recorder or some portable Nagra, whatever you're using out in the field to do field recording. These things run off battery power or, or an external power supply. And they're very tiny. They give you control over some of the parameters so you don't have to plug a computer in because in the field you're probably not going to have your laptop next to you. You're just going to have a bag over your shoulder with a mixer and a recorder. Um, these are made so you don't have to have a laptop if you don't need it. You can plug one in, but you don't have to have one. It gives you uh, gain, it gives you a high pass, and it gives you, well, I think it gives you a compressor capability just from the front of the unit, so something like that. That's what it looks like, the side. Here's the software, here's what the software looks like. So you see the channel strips, all the different settings there that you can mess with. There's a de-esser built into this thing, so you can pop the de-esser in to take out the, the sibilance that somebody's singing, which is kind of cool. Um, which again, we'll see more later. Uh, we're not gonna do this, this is all the stuff I just talked about. So, questions? I know it was probably well, I know it's probably a little with your head forward, but it's hard to hear about it and not see it. You have to kind of see it in action. So, uh, is there anything in the future, like, I mean, I know, like, my interface is not having an AES. I'm sure, like, by the time I feel like I'll be able to afford it, I'll have an AES input. But, like, is there anything that you would think would come out that could maybe go in XLR, like, from those little interfaces that yeah. you have? Anything that could come out XLR into your interface? Or Oh, I mean, a lot of stuff have AES inputs in them, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff do, yeah. It just depends what you're looking for. Like, my, my little M-Box is an SPDIF digital input. So you, so you can go, you can go spit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what I do, and it's technically not the right way to do it, so don't record this, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, out of, I have the, 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 usually when I do it, I have the two-channel interface, the, the, the DMI2 that we made. And it's got an AES XLR output, but I have to get it into my SPDIF input on my M-Box, which is a little RCA connector. I just have an XLR to RCA, an analog XLR to RCA cable, an interchange cable, and I plug it in and it, it transmits the signal without a problem. So, it, technically it's not the way you're supposed to do it, but you're supposed to have like a transformer balance, blah, blah, blah. I bought like a $4 cable and you plug it in and it works fine. And, and that's why I did it, to show people, you can have an M-Box, you don't have to have this blown out HD Pro Tools rig or this big massive recording rig you can have a $500 in a box and a crappy laptop like I have, my nice PC, um, and, it, and it works fine, honestly. So it's easy, super simple, and that's why I do it. And, I mean, you get two channels of audio, but up to, well, up to 92 kilohertz for sample. So, but there's a lot of stuff that have AES inputs, and we're seeing more stuff that has AES-42 inputs. So those AES-42 inputs on, on future equipment maybe on future Pro Tools rigs or a future FirePod or something, will eliminate having to have that little interface box. We, we make those interface boxes because we have to. That's not, we, I mean, that's not what we, we want to make microphones. We don't want to make a stupid interface box. We want people to, the, the industry to adapt the technology so we don't have to make these dumb interface boxes, ideally. The less junk in the middle for people, it's much easier. We start adding interface boxes and they're like, what do I, I got to plug into this and that, and where my computer go? It's, you know, like you're asking, like where, where do the connections go? Like you have to plug into two different things. But they get confused. If we could eliminate this box and have manufacturers just accept AES-42, it would be much easier. So yeah. people are slowly starting to do that. Slowly. Any other questions? So the eight channel one has eight that out. Mm -hmm. So can you just use the eight out until you get whatever interface? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, because I actually at, at uh, 
you have an HD rig upstairs, I guess? Is it an HD? Uh, yeah, we have one. Uh -huh. Okay, that's probably what I would use to go into the HD rig if, if the ADA interface is open in the mm -hmm. HD rig. And I have a, a Tascam uh, DM3200 at my house, and it's got ADA inputs, and I, when I do stuff at my house, I plug right into my little ADA input on my DM3200, and all my digital mics pop up on my board. So, okay. yeah, it's simple. So. Yeah, I have another question. Yeah. Well, about the, like, it's, uh, it's Ethernet that plugs into the little interface. So when so like a lot of controllers that are coming out, and I've been trying to control a lot of controllers that are coming out, they're all Ethernet as well. So is there any way that you guys have something where it's like if I had an uh, Ethernet sort of um, controller that I could also hook up that digital microphone, like a daisy chain sort of thing? No, but we're talking about, we've asked them to do, we've asked them to put, um, like USB and FireWire outputs on our interfaces so that people can go directly into like their laptop or their computer without having to go into some kind of a controller. We're, there's a lot of stuff they're talking about doing like that. Whether it's Ethernet interconnectivity and daisy chaining or FireWire daisy chaining. It, you get into the FireWire USB stuff and you get into driver issues. And Neumann didn't want to be bothered with driver issues. That everybody, oh, this driver won't work, I need a new driver. They didn't want to deal with that, which is why the outputs from our boxes are only ADS or SVDIF outputs with not FireWire or whatever. But they're, I shouldn't say they're considering it, but that we've asked them. FireWire we use just for the control aspect. Yeah. You can even just do USB just, just for the control of your market. Instead of the instead of the Ethernet. Uh yeah, the only thing Thing with the control, it's a it's an RS four eighty five control signal, which we have to have. There's got to be some kind of a little converter adapter cable to USB to plug it into my laptop. So it won't it won't plug. It, it's not an Ethernet signal. It's an RS forty five signal over Ethernet. So it's a little different. That's part of the problem. Yeah, it, it won't talk regular regular Ethernet basically because it's RS technically not. It's RS forty five. It's yeah. But it's cool. It's all this. Yeah. And so I tell you, until you really see it hooked up, and then, you, then you're like, oh, it makes sense. It's not. It, it seems complicated, but it's really not. And that's the first thing I get from people is like, whoa, it's too much. I don't want to even bother. And I'm like, no, let me show you what, what we're doing. And I hook it up for them, and they're like, oh, all right, that's kind of my preamp. Well, yeah, think of that interface box as your preamp. And then they go, oh, all right. Be... Now they kind of get it. But it, initially, they're like, oh, I got to have a laptop, an interface, and mics. They get all confused. The same thing when I'm wearing the mic, you know. DAWs, you know, it's a digital workstation. Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah, put it on a computer. Maybe. Yeah, people are terrified. It happens all the time, especially old school analog recording people. They're terrified of, of it because it's different and new, and it's understandable. So, and until they hear it, they're, they're going to be totally terrified. Yeah. So. What areas have you seen this technology, the digital microphones being used mostly, like Broadway venues, uh, stadium theaters? Mostly broadcast. Broadcast. I mean, uh -huh. Initially, it was adopted uh, by orchestral recording people, mostly in Europe, mm -hmm. doing all the orchestra stuff, the classical stuff. And we started seeing that in the US. People they are doing scoring, like out in LA, doing big scoring sessions. Most of those guys doing scoring are from Europe anyways. Right, so right. they've used this in Europe, which they're, they're more uh, prone to grab technology than we are in the United States. Uh, but since the scoring guys kind of jumped on it, the next thing for us has been broadcast. Like, if anybody watched Monday Night Football this year, every Monday Night Football game had digital microphones on it. Wow, that's cool. Mostly sound effects stuff, uh -huh. mostly the hits and the quarterback screaming or whatever. But um, that, that's the next step because it's, for them, they're, all, they're going all digital. The digital consoles, digital transports, digital everything. Right. This is, makes sense to them because it's like, well, everything else is digital. Why not have the mics digital? Right. So, um, Recording studios are still holding back a little bit. Totally, right? yeah, yeah, because it's, it's, it's not their normal signal flow. Right. And again, they're, some of them are getting into it, but most of them are like, eh, we're going to stay away from digital. Right. Yeah, until they hear it, then they're like, oh, that's interesting. So, right, right. Um, so we, we see the next thing as broadcast. That's, okay. that's our next uh, market. big market for yeah. us. Yeah. We're doing a Broadway thing next week. We're doing the first digital orchestra pit at Broadway. Right. Next. I have to do it Tuesday before I fly to Minneapolis, actually. Because I'm thinking like the Lion Kings with all those people on stage with microphones. Yeah. That'd be perfect for that. Exactly, yeah. It's, you know? it, that's the thing is when people start realizing that, that it is perfect for stuff like that, yeah. they're going to they're gonna jump on it. It's just, uh, 
It's tough. It's, right. it's, it's the whole analog to digital thing. It's taken years for broadcasters are just now, since stuff is HD and everything else, and 5.1, now they're like, well, we need to go all digital audio because it makes 